hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens in Cambodia, and today I'm taking you on a day trip to a, it's a village uh, called Kampong Cham, and I've uh, arranged to meet up with a local family. We're gonna go to the market, we're gonna cook some Cambodian food, we're gonna eat, and we're just gonna walk around the village, and this should be a fantastic day of food and Cambodian culture. We just made it to Chido Village and say hello to the gigantic oxes. That was about a two hour drive from Phnom Penh and we have met up with our host family. We're gonna be cooking somewhere right around here in this village. Uh, but the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the market to buy some ingredients. This is a great little local village and actually you can't see it from here but we're really really close to the giant Mekong River. Hello. We're in the back of a tuk-tuk now, on our way to the market, gonna buy some ingredients for the cooking. This is just fantastic. The slow village Cambodian life, driving along in the tuk-tuk at about four kilometers per hour. Fantastic. We're crossing the bridge over the giant Mekong River now, back over to the, the main town of Kambong Cham. And the village is located over there on the other side. So we're gonna go to the market on the, in the main town area. We just arrived to the local market and we're gonna buy the ingredients for today's cooking. The prices at this market, especially for the fruit, are really, really, well, really good price. We just bought two kilos of mangoes and it's, it's I think it's about, it's about um, 25 cents per kilo of mangoes. That's, that is a good price. Oh, can I'm Jean? Do I come? Hello. Go by the park. Hello. Just as they're gathering and buying the vegetables and the ingredients. We had to, we had to stop for a little durian this morning for breakfast. She chopped one up, stuck it into a styrofoam box, and it is, it is ready to eat. This is a really fantastic market, and you have to, you have to crouch down to fit through this market. But they have so many local ingredients uh, from this Mekong region, and people are so extremely friendly as well. Lots of little fish. Wow, oh, what a, what a fantastic market. Freshly squeezed sugarcane juice. Mm. Oh yeah, that is really sweet, but it is very, very refreshing and it's really cold. And I think there's a little bit of lemon in there, lime, maybe lime, to contrast that sweetness. It's pretty good, 1,000. Maybe two kilos? I would say that was a pretty successful trip to the market. The entire back of the tuk-tuk is just loaded. Look at all those coconuts, bananas, pineapples, fruits, snacks, cups. Oh, the family, the family that's hosting us, they also have a, they have a convenience shop right in that village. So I think they're buying some supplies to, to sell back at the shop as well. Oh yeah, and we've got boxes of things. We've got random stocks of bananas. Jello. Dude, this is proper. This is like use of every single horizontal space. Joel got the VIP seat. <laughs> and what a fantastic place to, to share a treat that we just picked up at the market. Oh. Creamy. <laughs> okay, that's not the best durian I've ever had. Not a lot of flavor to it. But it is a buttery texture. But it's really not sweet or bitter or not much flavor at all, actually. Let's try the rambutan. Mmm. Oh, the rambutan is very good. 
really sweet, a little bit sour and very, very juicy. We successfully made it back from the market. That was quite a, quite a journey in the tuk-tuk. But these tuk-tuks are fantastic. They're like, they're almost like horse, horse carriages. They're pretty comfortable. And now we're gonna, we're gonna start cooking. At the front of the house, this family, they own a small convenience store. So you can buy all sorts of things. They have little snacks, little toiletries. And then in the back here is where the cooking happens. There's a lot of corn that's yeah, grown in this actually, area. Yeah, because actually one year we do per time. Uh -huh. And we keep the first until the next we get it. Okay. And that, that makes a nice fire for cooking? Yeah, it's okay. good. Because oh, this great. is to be done by the wood. Will you do the cooking? Yeah, I cook like the one first. Okay. The first dish that they're making is fried fish. And they are fish that we bought at the market. And they are, I think they're a type of tilapia fish. Um, they just added some oil and some salt and then just kind of shallow frying them over that hot fire. And they just, they're just sizzling away. Cooking at somebody's home, and especially cooking in a rural area of any country, is one of the one of the most awesome ways to see culture and just to observe a country. So this is really cool. I love how they're uh, they're using corn cobs to to light the fire, to fuel the fire, and then cooking the fish. Cool. We got some ice delivery. Oh, looking at those onions. Hey guy. Oh yeah. Hi. That is going to be fantastic. She is prepping the ingredients for a local curry and all the ingredients are not even from the market but they're from right here in this this community right here in this village the lemongrass the galangal. Oh that's going to be a wonderful curry. I can't wait wait to taste the the local curry. In that curry paste, it's very heavy on the lemongrass. Lots and lots of lemongrass. There's some turmeric in there, there's some galangal and I think that's mainly the ingredient so far. And now she's gonna chop up the, the chicken. Is that gonna be for the curry? Yeah. Oh, and Joel's, Joel's pounding the curry paste. <laughs> the secret, the secret to all the <laughs> Somewhere across the street to go make the coconut milk. There must be a coconut grater over here. Who did that? Oh, back there, here they have a, an electric coconut grinder. Hello. 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 Okay, that is incredibly nifty. They have an electric coconut grinder, but it's definitely makeshift. It's definitely homemade, attached to a car battery. And then there's some kind of a turning blade knife inside. And then like a, it's almost like a little pot um, that is connected so that the, the coconut just shaves off with ease. It's a lot faster than by hand, but that's, that's really cool. Just squeeze that freshly grated coconut with a little bit of water and that pure coconut cream is released. Oh, it's one of coconuts are one of the greatest things in the entire world. Oh, this is shrimp paste. Kapi. Yes. Oh, same in, come in. Kapi. Kapi. Yes. Okay. Shrimp. Shrimp paste, yes. Kapi. Yep. The time has come for the curry. This is what I've been waiting for. Oh, and uncle. I think uncle is the main curry chef, the curry master. And so they put a uh, pot onto the fire and put up. Whoa. <laughs> oh, some cats fighting. Um, they just added in the, some of the coconut cream first. The curry so far is absolutely stunning. Uncle first uh, sizzled or simmered down some coconut milk with some oil and then added in the chili and then added in the shrimp paste and just let, it's letting that just, well, I'm getting a lot of smoke in my eyes. Letting that just sizzle and just just soak up the flavor and just it just 
okay, I gotta step outside. And just letting that just soak up all of that flavor and just, oh man, I'm tearing from that smoke. It is, it is tough work cooking, cooking over the, over the fire and maintaining the fire. Oh, here goes in the, the curry paste. All that lemongrass in the galangal. That's all paste, dude. That is gonna be flavorful. Chicken? Oh, okay. Okay. Mai mai đánh mai vô nữa nè. Cần thêm tí nữa nè. Just tossed in all of the I think it's sweet potato, there's carrots, there's all the vegetables, there's onions. The time has come for lunch. All of the, I think all of the dishes are ready and the curry is finished, dishing out rice. And there's quite a lot of us here. I think we're just all gonna stand around or sit anywhere and have a delicious lunch, home-cooked lunch. I like the cookie Hey. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you very much. There's a cat that's about to lick the camera. Meow! We got the fish that they made and the curry, uh, which was simmering for about an hour, and all those vegetables are cooked down now, and they have the meat there. And just look at how rich and thick that curry is. What's also cool is that there's both pork and chicken within this curry. We'll see what I, I get in a, in a scoop down here. Let me get a bit more of that, a bit more of that sauce. Oh, yes. Okay, a bit more of that gravy. I think I got a, by luck of the draw, I got a piece of pork on the first bite. With the long bean, or with that onion and a, oh, you can even see a whole peanut in that bite as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I got a, I got like a, a little piece of star anise as well. It's a little bit mild, but it's very like a like a comforting curry. It's nutty. It's uh, you can taste those onions in there. It's not really spicy, but it does have a little bit of a chili fragrance. Uh, and then I really like that lemongrass. That lemongrass flavor is nice. And then all those fresh vegetables is what is what really makes it really good. Next up for the fish, it's like a tamarind, onion, garlic sauce. And this is one of the the family specialties. So I'm gonna try some of this fish. And he just coated it in all of that that onion tamarind sauce. All right. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, the fish is amazing. It has that like sharp sourness of tamarind, but it's not that sweet. And then it's nice and salty. The onions are just lightly sauteed, so they're still quite strong. That goes wonderfully well with the fish. Oh, and it's nice and like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like salty to the point where it sort of gives your, your tongue a little zing, but in a really good salty kind of way. This is a local dish from right here. And it's called mok. It's called mok. It's a mok. It's a type of a mok. Yeah, but this is called a mok. There's minced meat in there, and then it's boiled along with eggs. Mixed with eggs and then boiled with some spices. It's kind of salty. It kind of does have a cheesy, cheesy taste to it um, and then that goes really well with the the cabbage and the the long beans it, it a little bit goes a long way a little bit flavors a lot it's pretty pretty salty mm -hmm. and flavorful Whoa. and it does have almost a, a slightly fermented taste to it it has a little bit of an aged flavor to it like an aged cheese All that cooking and going to the market will make you hungry. We finished with lunch, that was fantastic and we were all really hungry and now we have some fresh fruit, some mango and some watermelon. Oh, yeah. oh mango, that's extremely ripe. Very, very, very sweet. And it just sorta, 
It's one of those silky soft mangoes that just sort of melts in your mouth, turns to like a puree as soon as you take a bite. Lunch was excellent. I'm stuffed and we are off to just walk around and see some of the village. Hanging out with Maureen and she's gonna just walk us around and show us some of the, the projects here and the farm and the, just walk around the village. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, they're getting ready to eat. Hold on real fast. We just came to visit the village and the NGO on a day trip and just to eat lunch and cook. But they also have some bungalows here. So if you want to spend the night and just enjoy this beautiful village and peacefulness and the amazing Cambodian culture, you can come to stay here and stay in one of these bamboo bungalows. Really cool. Next time, we'll come to stay. Hello. Hello, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're getting ready to leave, but I just wanted to quickly show you. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I just wanted to really quickly show you inside the house. It's just a big open space and even the the floor is all made of bamboo, so it has this really, it's really clean and kind of bouncy. Uh, and that keeps it cool on the inside. And then there's just various corners with uh, mattresses and beds and mosquito nets. So it's like just a, it's almost like a, a longhouse style of, of accommodation. And just um, the, the families all have a different section of the, of the house. But it's really cool once you get in here because you, you got that airflow breeze. Such a wonderful village and such a, such a community of friendly people. And you can just walk around, you can just get kind of lost in this village and people will point you in the right direction. There are friendly kids. This is great. And you can just feel the, the pace of life here is just on a, on, a, on a lesser, slower level, which is fantastic. Bye bye. Whoa. Hello. Hello. Hello! And you're gonna love the kids here too, they're awesome. Bye bye! High five! Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye! Oh, bye bye! Bye bye! Oh no! You're gonna love the people in this village. They're so friendly and the kids. Well, kids around the world are so, so incredible. And I organized this uh, entire day trip from Phnom Penh by contacting Chido Village. And uh, we paid $22 per person. They offer a cooking class, but I asked them if we could just come to the homestay and have a kind of a just cooking with the family and eating. And that's exactly what we did. I want to say a big thank you to the host family for uh, showing us how to cook and for just hanging out. And also to the volunteers who we met while we were here. This was fantastic. And thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, I'd love to hear it from you in the comment section below. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from Kampong Cham in the village of Chido. And I will see you in the next video.